News Talk with Julia Cosby at International News Channel and Take TV is on Ontario's ongoing corona pandemic situation and as well as on what Ontario's budget has to share to combat this pandemic. I'm joined here with Fazal Hassan. He is the NDP MPP from South York Weston. Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Julia, for having me. So uh, today we're going to discuss the budget. We're going to discuss uh, COVID-19. Uh, there's lots of things to talk about. So just to uh, start off, how concerned are you about the second wave of the ongoing pandemic in your riding as well as Ontario? Well, I'm concerned about and every Ontarian should be concerned about and the official opposition have been um, uh, raising the alarm with regards to the um, the pandemic, uh, the first wave, the second wave, and now the failure of not able to tackle it. We are concerned about it and we're concerned the safety of everyone. Uh, uh, and also we needed also uh, to make sure that uh, the community safety is number one. You recently asked uh, Doug Ford, Premier Doug Ford, why uh, South York and Weston continues to be neglected by the government's COVID-19 response. You urged Ford to address the community's shortage of pharmacies and vaccine access. What has been done by Premier Ford so far? Very good. Thank you very much, Virginia. Uh, York South Weston has been neglected not only the last three years, but the last 15 years. So I will say it's from bad to worse. And this was continued this neglect, as you know, uh, when the pandemic was declared on March 13. It took us until September 28 to have a permanent testing uh, 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 facility. And now, to this day, we don't have a permanent vaccine facility in, in a riding that has been termed as hot spots and also as high risk community. And, um, and where do our people go? to get their first scenes, mm -hmm. far away communities, and it's it's a mess, it's a chaos, and it's a confusion. And I've uh, also, with regard to the pharmacy portion, we only have eight, you know, though other communities had so much of them. And when they were also, those folks tried to book them, they were not even available any supplies. So this is a, a, a failure from not only this government, but also past governments, uh, especially the last 15 years that have neglected this community. And we are coming, uh, uh, Julia, as kind of an afterthought, you know, uh, that our community is not included the programs and services that this government is delivering out when it comes to the pandemic. We also have a large essential workers, frontline workers, who has to go and do the essential things that we need to move things in this province. And, and they don't have basic days. And when they get ill or when they're sick, they can't stay home. They have to go out, they have to pay their rent, they have to, you know, think about their food and so on. And and, and this is essential to make sure that people like that, BSWs, frontline workers, to get basic days. And also to raise the BSWs uh, uh, um, um, wage as well, so that we encourage them to have uh, our good paying wages as well. So to this day, uh, uh, Julia, we don't have a permanent uh, uh, um, uh, uh, facility in our community. Mm -hmm. I have also written to the Minister of Health uh, in a couple of uh, occasions. We have also given them suggestions of places where it could be used and, and, and just start quickly to uh, uh, give folks uh, their vaccines uh, or their shots. Uh, and, and imagine a community neglected like that, where we are also being termed as hotspots and high-risk community. I know that the current government, they claim that the 2021 Ontario budget supports the province's comprehensive vaccine distribution plan, along with providing additional resources for health and care sector and their initiatives to protect the economic well-being of families, uh, workers and employees. Uh, do you see it that way? Well, I mean, look at it. I mean, this is, we are in the middle of a pandemic. I've talked about the essential workers, the frontline workers. They, this budget doesn't include a paid sick days. They don't have, if they don't have the, the uh, if they are sick, they can't stay home. And this is how workplaces now are going to be spread. If people are sick, if one person is sick or feeling not well, they are forced to go to work. And now we've seen many outbreaks in workplaces, but the right thing to do 
is to provide basic days for for every worker in Ontario. And it has been estimated 60% of workers don't have basic days. And this budget, again, it, it is a budget of cuts. It doesn't have uh, basic days. It doesn't have raising uh, the PSW wages. It doesn't have uh, uh, money for uh, childcare, uh, for youth, for housing. You name it. The, the important issues uh, that that could help uh, folks uh, is not helping. Even in small businesses, uh, you know, there are restrictions. Uh, uh, not every small business is is included in also the Ontario uh, small business grants, so especially taxi drivers. They're very important. Uh, uh, small businesses, and they are part of the community, working hard day in and day out. They're part of the hospitality. Now they have, they said they're going to increase it, to expand it, but they're not including them in this budget, those folks who are doing a fantastic job in our community, moving folks, uh, even they have been asked to take people into hospitals, as you, we've heard some of the taxi drivers, who are uh, organizations that have raised concern about that as well, for their safety. Now you're riding of York South and Weston. It's full of uh, low income and racialized frontline workers. Um, it's been declared a hot spot um, early in the pandemic. How is the situation going in, during the current wave? Well, I think what we have been, uh, you know, in this uh, pandemic uh, doesn't affect uh, the same every community. There are communities uh, that are affected more than the others because we have more frontline workers. We have folks who have to take the bus to go to work. They cannot uh, uh, isolate themselves because they don't have their own cars and so forth. And that's why it's important. Community uh, like ours need extra help and extra support to make sure people are supported. In this budget and in this government continues the neglect we had the last 15 years before from bad to worse. We need, if we've been termed as um, a hot sports and high risk community, then we need those supports. We need a per permanent vaccine facility. We need also more pop-ups. And as you know, that uh, we couldn't even wait for the government. What we did, my office teamed up with Humber River Hospital to, to start organizing and registering and distributing vaccines to communities, to senior buildings, to faith uh, uh, centers, to also to Toronto community housing corporations, to make sure that we don't wait for the government, but uh, work with others to get the job done. And we have done that, but we also want more help, uh, the government to provide us more vaccines uh, and also more pop-ups uh, and more locations where people could go and get their vaccines. You recently said that your riding is a pharmacy desert when it comes to vaccine access. You have only eight pharmacies that offer vaccines in what is a very large riding full of essential workers, and that you don't even have a permanent facility to vaccinate seniors. And those eight pharmacies don't have adequate vaccine supply. Did you get any share from the 2021 Ontario budget to improve your situation in your riding? Well, I mean, that's a very good question. I think the word desert uh, uh, was, was, was a term used by the Toronto Star. And uh, I've also given the credit to that. Um, uh, but I think um, what right now uh, the government is not providing those essential support now is needed. We don't have, as I indicated again, uh, Julia, uh, 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 locations where people could go and get their vaccines. And this is again another neglect. We need support. We need resources. We need more uh, 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 vaccines coming to York Southwestern. So that if we are being termed high risk and, and hot spots, then the government should be working uh, members of our community and, and providing that. And the first thing to do is to start with having a permanent vaccine location and, and also provide more vaccines like other, uh, other hospitals, such as the Humber River Hospital, who have been very uh, keen and helpful uh, working with us uh, to come to our community and help, uh, uh, you know, team up my team here uh, and also register and also organize and distribute. That is also uh, something we encourage, but they don't have vaccines to continue that aspect as well. So we need uh, to continue that uh, cooperation uh, and, 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 and working together collaboratively, but also we need uh, uh, the government to provide us more locations 
where members of our community, the seniors, even now they've announced him, folks from the age uh, uh, 18 and above. But uh, Julia, the problem with that is there isn't any plan. They just announce without a plan and there's no uh, a place where people can be can actually uh, go to to get their vaccines in areas that they said a hot spot is the priority and high risk communities like ours, but they have no plan. Nothing is going on, no locations to go to. And this is also creating more chaos and confusion. Yes, you are using uh, some strong criticism. I have a quote from you here, and uh, that quote says, the lack of pharmacy locations and lack of a permanent facility to distribute the vaccines is not only bad public health policy, but amounts to discrimination among racialized and economic lines. Our high-risk, hard-working communities deserve pandemic protection. When will the Ford government create an equitable and vaccine response? Uh, unquote. Uh, there's so many questions about your statement, uh, bad public uh, health policy, discrimination along racialized and economic lines. Um, when do you think that the Ford government will create an equitable uh, vaccine response? And um, have you received any any answers or anything um, to your liking? Well, I mean, the, Julia, the key here is that we want them to address that. And this is also, as I mentioned, uh, on the COVID uh, testing facilities. It took us six months and a half to have a permanent a testing facility. And this is also repeated again to now, where you know distributions of vaccines are distributed uh, in many places. And I think it's, it's okay, everybody should be getting the vaccines, but I think we should start where we have termed as hotspots and high risk uh, communities like ours. So far, there is none. The only things we've got in our community is uh, us teaming up with Humber River Hospital trying to help them organize and register and deliver with them on those vaccines in, in senior buildings, faith centers, and TCC uh, 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 buildings. And this was also our initiative, reaching out to Humber River Hospital and working with them. We thank uh, the CEO, uh, Bob Collins, and the, the, the mobile pop-up team uh, leader, uh, Robin, uh, uh, Ruben Rodriguez, who have been very helpful. That's all we have at the moment, and they don't even have our vaccines to continue at the moment. What we are asking again is these kinds of neglect and lack of, of, of equity and, and an equal distribution of vaccines to come to an end and now act now to uh, help places where it's identified uh, as hotspots and high risk to get uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 people um, uh, fascines quickly. So that way we, we put people's health uh, 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 front and center and make sure that everybody in this community is safe. Now, I know that your party leader, Andrea Horvath, has said that the federal government's doing a very poor job. She has no doubt, but the Ford government has not been doing as good of a job either. Um, I had, do have a quote from her which says, the messed up distribution system here in Ontario sits at the feet of Doug Ford and his government, unquote. Uh, why would you, would you add it in? Well, absolutely. I mean, I think my leader have been uh, 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 speaking about this, these inequities and the lack of vision for this current government and also the failure that they are letting us down again and again. And I think, yes, because the premier has a responsibility to clearly negotiate clearly the federal government to ask them exactly what numbers of vaccines do we need. And that tells us also the failure of lack of vision and leadership that where we are at the moment. And that's exactly where it it, 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 it uh, uh, um uh, uh, letting us down uh, by the leadership of these uh, uh, Ford Conservatives here at the Quinn's Park. Thank you so much, uh, MPP Hassan, for joining me today, all the way from York South Weston. I really appreciate your time here. Thank you for your time, uh, Julia. And uh, uh, next time, hopefully, when we come out of the uh, the pandemic, sir, basically, basically, I'll be able to come to join you live there. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.